The clock is ticking at Starbase, Texas. In just days, Starship Flight 8 will ignite its engines and soar toward the heavens. Critical flight advisories have been issued. Road closures are appearing on the schedule. The signs are unmistakable. SpaceX is on the verge of making history again. February 28th, mark that date. The eighth test flight of Starship isn't just another launch. It's a mission packed with ambitious goals that could reshape our future in space. The evidence is mounting. Notams have been released for both the Mexican side of the Gulf and the landing zone near Australia. Our community observers have captured exclusive images of recovery buoys being prepared in Exmouth, Australia, the clearest footage we've ever obtained of these critical recovery operations. Meanwhile, at Starbase, tanker trucks are actively filling the orbital launch mount's tank farm. Starship's hot stage ring, a crucial component for this flight, has been spotted moving from the factory to Mega Bay 1. Is everything falling into place for a February 28th launch? The FAA is still reviewing data from Flight 7, and any delays in approvals could push us into early March. But hardware-wise, Booster 15 and Ship 34 stand ready, awaiting their moment to thunder into the sky. And what about Flight 9? New FCC applications hint at something revolutionary, potentially the first test that includes catching Starship on its return. Could Ship 36, the first Starship with visible attachment points for the catch mechanism, be selected for this groundbreaking attempt? From Starship updates to asteroid threats, from the ISS deorbit timeline to revolutionary space mining missions, we're covering the full spectrum of humanity's next great leap. Welcome to Elon Musk 24 Hours. Let's dive right in. Starship Flight 8, the final countdown. The anticipation for Flight 8 is electrifying. This isn't just another test flight, it's a critical stepping stone in SpaceX's ambitious roadmap to Mars. We've analyzed the data coming from Starbase and everything points to final preparations being well underway. The recovery operations in Australia have reached a new level of sophistication. Those boys you're seeing in our exclusive footage, they represent years of engineering refinement. Each one is equipped with advanced tracking systems designed to pinpoint Starship's splashdown with unprecedented accuracy. The recovery team will be stationed just off the coast of Exmouth, ready to retrieve valuable hardware that could tell us crucial details about Starship's performance during re-entry. What makes Flight 8 particularly significant is how it builds on the success of Flight 7. SpaceX has incorporated numerous improvements based on data collected from previous flights. The hot stage ring that we spotted moving to Mega Bay 1 features redesigned thermal protection systems that should better handle the extreme temperatures during stage separation. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, the FAA approval process. While hardware readiness looks promising, the regulatory side remains the wild card. Sources close to the situation indicate the FAA is meticulously reviewing telemetry data from Flight 7 with particular attention to the controlled splashdown sequence. Any concerns could push us into early March, though SpaceX engineers are working around the clock to address potential questions before they arise. What's your take? Will SpaceX maintain their ambitious timeline or will we see another delay? The comment section awaits your predictions. Naudi Irun, the future, Flight 9 and beyond. Now this is where things get truly revolutionary Flight 9 could introduce a game-changing capability, the first ever attempt to catch a returning Starship. The FCC application we've uncovered contains specific language about the second stage returning to the launch site as an alternative to water landing. Ship 36 has already been spotted with visible attachment points designed specifically for the catch mechanism. These aren't just minor modifications. They represent a fundamental shift in how SpaceX plans to recover and rapidly reuse their vehicles. The catch system itself is an engineering marvel. Using the launch tower's arms, affectionately nicknamed chopsticks by the SpaceX community, the system will attempt to grasp the returning Starship midair, eliminating the need for ocean recovery altogether. This approach, if successful, would dramatically accelerate the turnaround time between launches and substantially reduce recovery costs. It's worth noting that ships 34 and 35 could potentially be retrofitted with similar attachment points. Our team is monitoring Starbase closely for any signs of such modifications. 
The Versern Falcon 9, breaking new ground in the Bahamas. While Starship captures headlines, Falcon 9 continues to quietly revolutionize space access. On February 18th, SpaceX achieved something remarkable. The first ever landing of a Falcon 9 booster off the coast of the Bahamas. The mission lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at precisely 6.21 p.m. Eastern, carrying 23 Starlink satellites destined for low Earth orbit. Approximately eight minutes later, Booster B-1080 executed a flawless landing on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. What makes this landing historic isn't just that it was the 110th successful recovery on this particular drone ship, or even that it marks SpaceX's 410th overall booster recovery. The true significance lies in its location, the first international landing site for an orbital class booster. This achievement stems from a strategic partnership between SpaceX and the Bahamian government. By positioning recovery vessels near the Bahamas, SpaceX gains access to launch trajectories that were previously impractical, particularly southeast paths that open up entirely new orbital insertion possibilities. The economic implications for the Bahamas are substantial. Beyond the immediate benefits of SpaceX's operations, the company has committed $1 million to the University of the Bahamas specifically for STEM education. This investment aims to nurture a new generation of Bahamian scientists and engineers who could play crucial roles in the expanding space economy. The collaboration also enables ambitious missions like the upcoming Polaris Dawn, which will be the first crewed spaceflight to directly orbit over the Earth poles. These polar orbits require unique launch trajectories that the expanded recovery zone makes possible. With plans to increase launch frequency to an unprecedented 188 missions annually, SpaceX's expanded recovery capabilities will be essential to maintaining this accelerated pace. When rockets return, the unplanned light show space operations don't always go according to plan. On February 19th, residents across Northern Europe witnessed a spectacular atmospheric re-entry as a Falcon 9 upper stage made an uncontrolled descent through the atmosphere. The origin of this unexpected light show was the Starlink 11-4 mission. While the primary mission objectives were accomplished successfully, with the first stage landing perfectly and the Starlink satellites deployed to their intended orbits, the upper stage failed to execute its planned deorbit burn. The result? A fiery breakup that streaked across the skies of Denmark, Sweden, the UK, the Netherlands, Germany, and Poland. Social media quickly filled with videos capturing the brilliant streaks as the stage disintegrated miles above the Earth's surface. In Poland, authorities have recovered what appears to be debris from the event, including a charred metallic fragment and what analysts believe to be a composite overwrapped pressure vessel, COPV tank, that landed near Poznan. These components are now being analyzed to confirm their origin. This incident highlights one of the ongoing challenges in space operations, the management of orbital debris. While SpaceX has an excellent track record of controlled deorbits and responsible end-of-life disposal for their hardware, this rare malfunction demonstrates that even the most reliable systems occasionally fail. Should SpaceX implement redundant deorbit systems for these upper stages? The additional mass would reduce payload capacity, but might provide an extra layer of safety. What do you think would be the right balance between mission capability and risk mitigation? Dr. Shakri, the ISS timeline, is Musk right? The International Space Station has been humanity's continuous outpost in space for over two decades. This remarkable achievement in international cooperation has hosted hundreds of astronauts and enabled countless scientific discoveries in microgravity. However, the aging station isn't designed to orbit indefinitely Components are showing their age, with recent leakage issues highlighting the maintenance challenges of keeping a 450-ton structure operational in the harsh environment of space. SpaceX has secured a contract to build the United States deorbit vehicle, USDV, a specialized spacecraft designed to safely bring the ISS down at the end of its operational life. This $843 million contract calls for an enhanced version of the Cargo Dragon with significant modifications, a lengthened trunk module for additional propellant storage, 46 Draco thrusters compared to the standard 16, 
the capacity to carry approximately 30,000 kilograms of propellant, nearly six times the normal load. The current plan involves launching the USDV in 2029, docking it to the ISS's Harmony forward port, and keeping it dormant for about a year. As the station's orbit naturally decays, the USDV would eventually perform a series of burns to ensure a controlled re-entry over the remotest part of the South Pacific, an area known as the Spacecraft Cemetery. Here's where things get interesting. Elon Musk has reportedly suggested accelerating this timeline. While we await official confirmation from NASA and its international partners, the implications of an earlier deorbit would be far-reaching. The ISS represents a collaboration between 16 nations, and any change to its operational timeline would require extensive coordination and agreement. The question becomes, is an accelerated timeline technically feasible? And more importantly, what would be gained or lost by bringing down the ISS earlier than planned? The station continues to serve as a vital research platform and a proving ground for technologies needed for deeper space exploration. Asteroid mining. The gold rush beyond Earth, Astroforge is pioneering what could become the next great resource revolution. Their upcoming Odin mission, scheduled to launch in February 2025, targets asteroid 2022 OB5, a near-Earth object that could contain valuable metals worth billions of dollars. What makes this mission remarkable isn't just its ambitious goal, but the speed at which Astroforge is moving. When their original spacecraft design failed during vibration testing, they didn't delay for years as is common in the aerospace industry. Instead, they built an entirely new spacecraft in-house in just 10 months, a testament to the agility of private space companies operating without the bureaucratic constraints of government programs. Odin will hitch a ride to space aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9, launching as a secondary payload alongside Intuitive Machine's IM-2 lunar mission. This cost-effective approach allows Astroforge to focus their resources on the spacecraft itself rather than launch services. After a 300-day journey, Odin will rendezvous with 2022 OB-5 at a distance of 1.6 million kilometers from Earth. The spacecraft will conduct a flyby, collecting high-resolution imagery and composition data to determine if this M-type asteroid contains the expected concentrations of valuable metals like nickel, iron, and platinum group elements. But Odin is just the scout. If the mission confirms 2022 OB-5's resource potential, Astroforge will launch Vestry later in 2025, a follow-up mission designed to land on the asteroid and test extraction technologies. This one-two punch strategy could establish Astroforge as the first company to demonstrate viable asteroid mining techniques. The implications are profound. Earth's resources are finite, and many of the metals essential for technologies like batteries, electronics, and renewable energy systems are becoming increasingly scarce and environmentally destructive to extract. Asteroid mining offers an alternative source that doesn't require destroying habitats or exploiting labor in developing countries. They're in Europe's SpaceX, ESAR Aerospace, ready for launch. While American companies have dominated private spaceflight headlines, Europe is making significant strides toward independent launch capabilities. German startup ESAR Aerospace has completed full-duration testing of its Akala engine, the power plant that will drive the company's Spectrum rocket. This achievement puts ISAR on track for its maiden orbital flight in mid-2025, launching from Norway's brand new Andoya spaceport. Spectrum is designed to carry payloads up to 1,000 kilograms to low Earth orbit, positioning it as a direct competitor to Rocket Lab's Electron and Relativity Space's Terran R. What sets ISAR apart is their propulsion technology. The Aquila engine uses a closed cycle stage combustion design, an advanced approach that significantly improves efficiency compared to traditional open cycle engines. This technology is notoriously difficult to master, which is why so few rocket companies attempt it. ISAR's successful tests demonstrate that European engineering can compete with the best in the world. The strategic importance of ISAR's progress can't be overstated. For decades, Europe has relied on Ariane Space's government-backed launch services, which, while reliable, haven't kept pace with the innovation and cost reductions pioneered by American companies. ESAR Aerospace, along with fellow European startups like Rocket Factory Augsburg and Orbex, 
represents Europe's bid for competitive independence in the commercial launch market. The Lunar Renaissance, three missions, one Moon Intuitive Machines is preparing for another historic lunar mission with their Nova C-class lander, Athena. The spacecraft has completed integration and is now encapsulated within SpaceX's payload fairing, awaiting its journey to the Moon. The mission designated IM-2 is scheduled to launch no earlier than February 26, 2025, from NASA's Kennedy Space Center. This launch will create an unprecedented situation in space exploration. Three lunar landers simultaneously en route to the moon. IM-2 represents Intuitive Machine's second mission under NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services CLPS initiative, a key component of the Artemis program. The mission aims to deliver critical scientific instruments and technology demonstrations that will pave the way for sustainable human presence on the lunar surface. Following the company's successful landing of the Nova Sea lander, Odysseus, in 2024, which marked the first U.S. lunar landing since Apollo 17 in 1972. Intuitive Machines has established itself as a reliable partner in NASA's lunar ambitions. With each successful mission, the company strengthens the commercial case for lunar exploration and resource utilization. The scientific payloads aboard Athena will investigate the moon's surface composition, measure radiation levels, test communication technologies, and demonstrate resource extraction techniques. These instruments will provide valuable data for planning future crewed missions and establishing sustainable infrastructure on the lunar surface. As Athena prepares for its journey to the moon, all eyes are on Launch Complex 39A. The historic pad that launched the Apollo missions decades ago, now serving as the gateway for a new era of lunar exploration. To Rakunshir looking ahead, the future we're building, as we've seen today, we're witnessing a critical inflection point in humanity's journey to the stars. From SpaceX's Starship pushing the boundaries of reusable rocketry, to asteroid mining ventures opening up entirely new resource frontiers, to Europe's emerging private launch industry, the pace of innovation has never been faster. The next few months will be decisive. Starship Flight 8 could demonstrate capabilities that fundamentally change our approach to deep space exploration. The potential catch mechanism on Flight 9 might revolutionize rapid reusability. And as multiple lunar landers simultaneously make their way to the moon, we're seeing the foundations being laid for a permanent human presence beyond Earth. This isn't just about technological achievement. It's about expanding human potential. The metals we mine from asteroids, the research conducted on the ISS, and the lunar infrastructure being established through CLPS missions all serve a greater purpose creating a spacefaring civilization with resources beyond what our single planet can provide. If you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button to help others discover this content. Share your thoughts in the comments. I'm particularly interested in your predictions for Starship Flight 8. Will they make the February 28th launch window? Subscribe to Elon Musk 24 hours for continued coverage of these developments. We're tracking every launch, every test, every breakthrough that moves us closer to becoming a multi-planetary species. Check out our exclusive merchandise in the store link below. The new Raptor design and Starship Block 2 shirts just dropped. And if you're feeling adventurous, redlinehelicopters.com slash Felix offers a once-in-a-lifetime chance to see Starbase from the air, even during launches. Thank you for joining us on this journey through space and time. Until next time, keep looking up.